attention. Go. What a, what a great start here from both eights going absolutely flat out in this semi-final day for the Remnant Challenge Cup. Yep, and I made a mistake. It's actually Oxford Brooks, of course, here sitting on the uh, on the Berkshire Statesman, getting away incredibly powerfully. Look at that energy in that women's aid. Really, both of them want to make a statement. Both of them want to be here tomorrow, but both of them are going to be asking questions of each other. It is not going to be easy for either of these crews. Look at them as they come off the island, really high rating still, seeing if you can get an extra advantage out of the island, but it's tough. It's neck and neck. Maybe the Dutch are just creeping, but both crews at a high rate here, and the, the question is how far can you, can you have a transition? Can you drop the rate? And an eight, you tend to stay higher throughout the course, side by side here, Nobody wants to drop the rate. It's as important as ever to get that time to the barrier to make sure you are flat out. And both crews beside each other going absolutely hell for leather here. Wonderful shot here of the Dutch. I mean, the Dutch women's rowing program produces some excellent technical rowing as well as some super fast uh, women. Seven of these athletes were under 23 level. Three were in the Dutch eights group. Didn't qualify for the games, but it's top-class international rowers throughout the boat. Yeah, I and mean, the Dutch are in such fine form at the moment. It was the Dutch and the Brits who had the most A-final crews in Tokyo, or 10 crews in total each. So there's real strength and depth. There's great development work going on. We saw the Dutch four, of course, that had won into 23s and then went on uh, to do so well at the Olympics. And so, you know, again, this is this crew has got full of development. There are athletes here who are going to Paris, um, potentially in both crews. So Oxford Brooks and Queen's University Belfast relishing the chance, the composite crew on the far side, relishing the chance to compete with the Dutch. And it's a blistering pace both crews have set, both off the start. And you can see there's quite a bit of headwind uh, coming down this course. It's still a bit blustery, even though the sunshine makes it look like an idyllic place to row. It's quite tricky conditions, and they'll both need to be thinking now about the transition to that difficult second 500 metres or so as we pass through uh, the... Uh, quarter mile mark cross up to the barrier and it's neck and neck it is i think maybe the dutch had just a, a canvas or so coming out of the start but i think now that advantage has swung oxford brooks and queen's university belfast did a big push into the barrier and i think it just maybe snuck ahead but both crews at this point are thinking mm, this is not going to be easy this is going to go all the way and we need to keep digging in yeah, we see some communication going on in the stern of that boat between Stroke and Cox, just checking on what they're going to do on the race plan. How do you adapt to this situation? What do you think about when you're in this stage? Potentially the Dutch will have thought, we need to get clear water, we need to start to get a lead on our position. Maybe it's not quite panning out the way we want it to be. So how do you adjust? this situation it's often thinking about the technical moves that are needed in order to harness the power um, they will be going flat out the start and the cots and the stroke will be thinking about maybe where there's some tension creeping in that you need to get out so that the power can be applied in a way that's moving the boat not stopping the boat it's the purest way in which you can use your power but relax and recover in the, in the middle and of course when you're side by side at Henley not six lanes you feel the tension creep in from the other crew so close beside you yeah, and in the bow seat, you can see the composite crew, we usually just use the first two um, clubs, but there are more clubs in this. In the bow seat, you've got T Sarah Tisdall. You can just see the light blue of Cambridge on her vest. She run, won the women's boat race, a fantastic boat race up at Ely uh, this year, uh, uniquely at Ely, different place from normal for various reasons. But she's got a, a winning streak behind her, and um, she is a uh, fantastic athlete herself. A rower, a basketball blue, and a steeplechase blue. That's pretty unusual to represent your university in three sports at that level. Yep, and doing an MPhil in globalisation and international development. These, in both these crews, we have a lot of very talented rowers, but also talented students uh, who are, have got many other interests outside. And that's the thing, isn't it, that we, that we so often see. And we have just a slight advantage still to Oxford Brooks and Queen's University Belfast. But the Dutch are not out of it, and we always know Dutch crews can have a fierce kick at the and one of the things you're going to be doing in this Dutch crew at this stage is the, 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 the women in the bows can know that they're still overlapping and they, in the stern at this point you don't know how far the opposition is ahead of you so it's critical and again communication from the bows from Benta Paulus in the bow seat from Fleur van Ameda in the two seat first time at Henley for these women um, but they will be yet hollering and making sure that the, the women in front of them know that it's time to push, it's time to go they're still in contact and actually it looks to me like they're starting uh, to edge back 
You can never write off the Dutch, can you? And you're absolutely right. They have done one of their killer pushes there, and that has definitely taken a couple of seats back. They're asking questions, and now Otto Brooks University and Queen's University Belfast are going to have to see what they can do. They still have the slight advantage, but the Dutch are absolutely hanging in there. And not just hanging in there, they are putting in the next push. Their Cox is getting them to lengthen out a little bit more, add just a little bit more power, a little bit more sharpness. As you start to fatigue, you've got to get sharper. Well, this is going to allow us to see the story of this battle going on right now. How do we judge it? Are the Dutch moving each stroke? Are they moving a little bit on the Oxford Brooks composite crew here? Or have they now stuck in position? The excitement you get when you start to see that you're adjacent to another seat up and another seat up, well, that can convey uh, extra energy into the crew. But then when you stick like this, that starts to ask you questions as well. Have we done too much? That was an expensive push to get to this position. So now it's the Dutch uh, and Oxford Brooks and the composite crew to the bottom of our picture. They need to respond. They need to see if they can now open up an advantage, having had uh, nearly a length eaten back by the Dutch. I think they're just about to try and do that, aren't they? Nilks of Brooks and Queen's University Belfast crew, they're just about to put in another one there. But it is really tight here, and they're going to be, the Coxes will be gearing them up to start uh, taking the rate up for the second half. Uh, again, yeah, pulling away a little bit more in the composite crew here. Done a really good job of holding that Dutch push that absolutely ate back into their advantage. So right now, stroke, Sophia Heath uh, at 24 years of age, and stroke of the under-23 uh, bronze medalist women's eight in 2017 tons of racing experience here she will be thinking about how best to drive the crew and her job is to raise the stroke rate while continuing the stroke length and the dynamism that they've been showing down this course so they've got a hold but the dutch are coming again the dutch are not going to let this go they're going to come back at this crew as quickly as they can my goodness so everyone's gone up a notch here. Everybody's going through their gears. Who's got the most? At the moment, the composite crew have really livened. They've definitely gone up a couple of pits, asking questions of the Dutch. They did a great push to get almost back on turns, but now they need to go again. Well, I think it may not be the case that it looks like Oxford Brooks and Queen's University Belfast still have the edge. They're going to be driving it each other on as we come to the last few strokes before the line. What an amazing, tough, tough race through the middle of the course here at Henley. But it's Oxford Brooks University and Queen's University Belfast over Hollandia Road Club. Congratulations to both crews. Epic racing at Henley.